Okay, in this video, I'm going to show you guys how to prove that if y is equal to x times e to the x, then the nth derivative of y is equal to x plus n in the parentheses and then times e to the x for n is equal to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and so on, namely all the positive whole numbers n. And because we're trying to show that this is true for all positive whole numbers n, we will be using the mathematical induction. So let's go ahead and do that. PF for the proof, and right here, I'll write down by induction. And if you want to see how we can come up with this formula, you can check on my other video. I will have the link to that video in the description for you guys. But in this video, we will be focusing on the induction proof right here. And first, we will have to work out the base case. And right here, I wrote down n is equal to 1. But of course, this is also true when n is equal to 0. But in my opinion, that's just a really boring situation because the zero's derivative is just the function by itself. And, you know, this is just redundant. So let me just begin with n is equal to 1 right here. So that's the base case. And when n is equal to 1, that just means that we will be differentiating this one time. And hopefully you'll see that this is in this form right here. So let me begin by writing down y and then parentheses 1 for the first derivative. I just want to match with this formula's form right here. And as we know, this right here is just the same as y prime, and we can differentiate this by using the product rule. So I'll keep the first function, which is x, and I'll multiply by the derivative of the second. Derivative e to the x is just e to the x. And then I add the second function, which is e to the x, and then multiply by the derivative of the first. Derivative of x is just 1, so this is what we have. And because they have e to the x here and here, I can factor that out, but I will write down a parentheses with this x and then plus 1 first, and then close that, and I'll put the e to the x at the end, like this. So notice, for the first derivative, we do get x plus 1, and then times e to the x, so that means the formula is true for the base case, so checks. Now we are going to be assuming what we call the inductive hypothesis. So let's write down IH. This means that we will be assuming the formula. Let me just write that down. Is true for n is equal to, you know, some other positive whole numbers. I will just write that as K. And this means, that we just put down IE, I'm just talking about the case derivative, and I will just write down Y parentheses K, this is equal to, and you see this N, I'm going to substitute that for K right here, substitute K for that N, so I will have X plus K right here, and then times E to the X, like that. And hopefully, we will be using this and to show that the k plus 1's derivative, it has the same form as well, but with k plus 1 right here instead. All right, so inductive hypothesis. Now, the last part is we are going to check when n is equal to the next term, namely k plus 1. So I will begin with the left-hand side. I will have y and then parentheses k plus 1 like this. Well, for the k plus 1's derivative, what does that mean? Remember, the plus 1 means just the next derivative, and for the next derivative, we can just differentiate the previous derivative, namely y, and then parentheses k like this, the case derivative, right? And you see, the beauty of this is that this, we have the inductive hypothesis to help us out. So let me write down the notation in red first again. We'll be differentiating the case derivative, and I'm just going to be saying that this step is true based on the inductive hypothesis, and I'm going to be replacing this with that. So I put down x plus k times e to the x. Aha, now we have this to work with, right? And this is once again the product of two functions, so I will be using the product rule to differentiate. I will keep the first function, which is just x plus k, 
and then multiply by the derivative of the second, which is e to the x, and then add the second function, which is e to the x, and then multiply by the derivative of the first. Derivative of x plus k is just 1. So this is pretty much it. But we see that both of them have e to the x. So as usual, I will be factoring that out, but I will putting down this and that first. So this is x plus k, and then this plus 1, and then at the end, I'll put down the e to the x. So as you can see, when I have the k, the k plus 1's derivative, I simply just plug in the k plus 1 right here into this end, right? And then based on the inductive hypothesis, we were able to work out this form right here, which we also have x plus k plus 1, which is of course the same as you plug in k plus 1 into this end, so we do have the same form. Namely, this also checks out. So with all that, we completed our mathematical induction proof. Let's go ahead and put the box and shade this in. And every single time, you know this was just feel so wonderful.